All right, welcome everybody to the Three Way Podcast Hump Day Show. <laughs> I am your host with the most low public enemy fifty nine, and with me today I got the great J D McKinney. That's me. Um, so today we're gonna kind of, you know, it's we're halfway through the year. We're gonna go through the big releases of this year and kind of give our, you know two cents on whether these games are notable or not you know whether you should buy them or not whether they are game of the year contenders or not so uh let's start off with january now january came along we were so naive we didn't know any better we thought 2020 was the year we were all gonna we thought 2019 was, was gonna be year. a great year right Danny? we thought 2019 was gonna be was the worst we we're gonna have and 2020 was gonna be great and then <laughs> Mother Nature said, yeah, here, hold my beer. Yeah, little did we know. Mm. So, um, uh, but, you know, January came along. We got a couple of games in there. We got a, uh, so one of the games that released, uh, which we haven't really heard too much about any mo- anymore, was Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Now, Kakarot is kind of like a run through of the Dragon Ball Z storyline. Uh, so, uh, that's one of the reasons that I didn't really buy in. Uh, I didn't want to run through the Dragon Ball Z story all over again. I, I, I just thought $60 to do that again, eh, it's a hard buy. I'm kind of waiting for it to drop in price, and maybe I'll jump in. Uh, but, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, especially for a button-pushing game. I mean, a button-pushing fighting game, you really don't – I mean, you want something new, something, something original, and if it's just going to yeah. be rehashing the same story over again. I mean – you know, the graphics may be great, which, you know, they usually are with these kind of games, with with the Dragon Ball Z games. But, again, if it's just the same storyline over and over and over and over. But, with actually, it kind of kind of goes with the actual series. So they keep redoing the storyline yeah. and just keep giving it a different name every time they redo it. GT, Z, <laughs> what you got now. You know, so, I mean, it, it no, kind of works with that. It, and you're right. Aesthetically, it looks, it's probably the best-looking Dragon Ball Z game out there. Um the fighting game uh, is out, and that looks really good. But this is kind of like just a single player kind of thing, and uh, I do, I am interested in it. I am curious, uh, but I, like I said, I'll probably wait on that that price to drop. Right, which kind of gets like, good, good, like the, the end of the year sales, maybe or something like that. That that uh, another game I want to mention that that came out in uh, January, uh, which we haven't heard a whisper of since is Temtem. Now, if you haven't heard of Temtem, this is basically a knockoff of Pokemon that came out in January. Uh, It was the hype when it came out. Everybody was talking about it, but just haven't heard anything about it since. Uh, And that's my beef with it, is that a lot of people bought in. I think it was like a $40 game. uh, Bought in, supposedly early access, beta access, everybody was in. But it just never materialized to anything. Uh, and people were even thinking this was going to knock Pokemon off its pedestal. Uh, just kind of never materialized. Well, I, JD, I know you probably didn't play this game, but what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if, if it's, a, again, a knockoff of any game, you're going to you're gonna have to surpass that game completely. And right now, Pokemon's killing it with Pokemon Go and all the different types of Pokemon they got coming out. So if you're going to try and and work off of that particular model, you're really going to have to put something, you're going to have to pull something out of your butt, you know, big time. <laughs> you know, and if, if exactly, you that, yeah. Like, you're just not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to top it. And, and graphically, I think it kind of was, and it had the whole uh, MMO kind of thing going yeah. on, but it just never led to anything, right? People yeah. thought, oh, it's going to be updated, it's going to be updated. Servers got better, but it just never turned into anything. Oh, whatever. Yeah, it happens. Another release uh, in February. Now, we're still naive here. We're still thinking, oh, it's going to be the greatest year of all time. Right. Uh, Hunt Showdown. Now, this is like an online game that came out. I, I, I never really messed with it. Did you do anything with that game? No, I haven't. But I, from what you're talking about, it sounds kind of similar to some of those games that the... Uh... Like the the Freddy 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 Krueger one and the, and the Jason one and the, like the uh, yeah Friday know, the Thirteenth yeah. yeah some of those ones uh, come out. evolve I think it was one of those it kinda, Predator. I think it's yeah. like one of those games yeah yeah okay now, so see now that's actually a little bit more interesting because it is it is more 
you know, everybody trying to outsmart a, a, a more superior creature, you know, which mm. is the whole, whole design of the game. So I think that, that could be interesting, fun, kind of be interesting to play. But unfortunately, a lot of times you get into those games and not everybody wants to work together. You know, they only want to play their own, do their own thing and play their sure. own thing. And it just didn't work out as well. So, uh, and again, it's, it's. Yeah. And, and the bad thing is, as you can see, we just haven't heard anything yeah. much about from that game. Because that, that particular market started to become flooded. Not really flooded with those kind of games, but it's, it's already got the, you know, that was all, that was pretty much last year's thing. You know, everybody wanted to come out with a yeah. kind of style of game and it, yeah, you know, yeah, trying yeah. to do it this year. And you may be too late to the party, you know. Yeah, so, okay, so now we get into March, Finish and this is month. the month where we really start getting releases. We started off March thinking, oh, man, this is going to be a great month. This is going to be a great year. Mid-March, oh, well. It's the spring well, break. The March, we start hitting rumblings of, well, hold on, this virus going around. Come mid-March, we're in lockdown. I believe... Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, around that time. I don't remember, yeah. but we, we, we get in lockdown. Now we're like, what the fuck? We could deal with it a lot better now. We're used to it. But at that time, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. Um, beginning of March, though, we got Call of Duty Warzone. Yeah. Now, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare came out last, uh, last year, latter part. Really good game. Good multiplayer. But we didn't get the Battle Royale until this year. And damn, uh, it's kind of taken over when it comes to first-person person shooters. Um, everybody's kind of on it. I know that it's kind of DLC. It's not a main game. But I still thought it, it needs to be on this list uh, because it's so relevant and it's so good. Uh, what do you think? Uh, no, I, I've, I played it before. I liked it when it first came out. At the fact they've continually evolved it, you know, adding, you know, more more people to it and more aspects to it. I mean, the map is, hasn't changed much, but they keep adding more, more stuff to it. Like I said, like, you know, you can have more, more team members. You can have more, uh, weapons and stuff like that. You're, you're able to, you're now able to drive a lot of different vehicles. So it, it's, it's, they've, they've kept evolving. And I think when it, when it, like I said, when it first came out, it was great. It was better than the black ops Four battle. Royale. Yeah. You know, no it's, it's a lot more balanced and it's a lot more, you know, better for playing for everybody. Um, but, yeah, it, it just it definitely was a was a uh, let's say a welcome relief to the to the Black Ops or not for the not Black Ops but the uh, Call of Duty Battle Royale community. So yeah, no, I really love it, uh, and they're continuing to update that. You we still seeing updates going out. They just released a two hundred people Battle Royale, and I haven't played that. I don't know if it's good or not, but the fact that they're continuing to update and mess with it, I mean, I think it's good signs uh that it's true yeah, I, I like it a lot better than mm -hmm. the battle royale from last year and uh overall call of duty modern warfare i think is a great product yeah well i mean with this game being truly cross-play and this you know being able to you know because like i said my brother he plays on the ps on the ps4 or the computer and i play on an xbox so he and i can still play along with each other exactly different yeah. systems so I, I like that that's definitely yeah. a good aspect and hopefully it's going to be a precursor to more games coming out like that Oh, I can't wait. Yes, yeah. I hope so. Um, so at the latter part of the, of the month, we're all in quarantine <laughs> and two games come out, two communities come together to kind of like bring us all together, show their love for video games. And it's polar opposite kind of games. We get yeah. Animal Crossing Horizons and we get Doom Eternal. And these, I mean, Doom Eternal is about a warrior uh, that's risen from the dead to kill demons in Mars. And we got Animal Crossing where you're a villager making friends with the people in your village and trying to build your island. Uh, two different games. The communities come together. I really loved how they did that. Community art. All the love they have for each other. It, it, it was really cool to see, especially at a time where we're all in quarantine, all locked down. Yeah, it was definitely good. I mean, because you're, you're right. This is completely two completely different communities. You know, you have more of a, a family style playing game and a you know hardcore first person shooter, yeah, you know, exactly bloodlust kind of game. So the two of them working together as communities is actually a really good thing to see. You know, it's 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 uh, actually shows a determination by gamers to finally stop breaking out of those stereotypes of well we're only this type of gamer, we're only this type of gamer, and trying to work together to become more of a con more of a conjoined uh, community. 
you know. So yeah, and this is where I think we start to see game of the year contenders. Yeah, uh, Doom Eternal I think raises the bar from Doom 2016. Uh, uh, the studio shows that man, not, they can uh, innovate a little bit, bring you back that gameplay that you love so much, and uh, the soundtrack, of course, is, yeah. is crazy metal. Uh, but you're just murdering demons and and mm-hmm. saving you know the, the galaxy. The universe, so yeah. I think that's really cool. And then you have Animal Crossing, such an addictive game, uh, which Nintendo, regard regardless of the COVID nineteen and them having to move to work from home, continue to update this game regularly, monthly, uh, and giving the the players what they want. Um, and I continue to get on this game. I'm addicted. Uh, so two game of the year contenders here for sure. And this is where the year really starts rolling as far as video games go. Uh, cause we, you know, we start to see some big, big, uh, big releases here and they live up to all the hype. So I think COVID-19 was a Nintendo conspiracy. They had it ready to go right before the game came out and then boom. they knew, they knew somehow <laughs> they knew, um, latter part of March. Then we get. A really surprising release, Half-Life Alex, uh comes out. In this game, um, everybody wanted a Half-Life sequel. Uh, they kind of get that, but kind of don't with Half-Life Alex, It's a VR exclusive. I played this game. I just got to say, it's one of the best VR games I've played, no doubt. Um, not only... Visually, I mean, graphically, it's one of the best looking VR games out there, if not the best. I mean, I really felt like I was there, but the interactive, interactiveness of the game, like a lot of things you wish you could do in other VR games, I could do in this game. Like I could interact with almost everything in this game. Uh, and damn, like that, I was impressed by it. Now I didn't finish the game, so I don't want to say it's the best VR game out there. But a lot of people are claiming that, um, and I was really impressed by the game. Yeah, it's and I was I remember Half Life when it first came out, um, and I did play Half Life Two Episode One. I, I think I might played Episode Two. I don't know if I finished it or not. But so I, I know the character Alex, and I know this, this is you know for those who were wondering, this is between Half Life and Half Life Two. It's actually you know follows one of the main characters in Half Life Two. So I mean, it's it's interesting you know get back into that world and see that world again and just what you know. Being, and, you know, I, it's definitely. I want to. I want to get it for my VR because I got the Oculus as well, and I want to play it there too because I think it'd be kind of interesting to play that. Uh, but it's, it's, you know, it would it would be kind of fun to go back into that and replay that from from the get go. Yeah, and see that world again. I would recommend it, man. And I'll just say this: like a couple of hours in, or an hour, or, or and a half in, it started getting creepy and <laughs> damn, I started getting freaked out. Like, cause, well, I, I did uh, it with number yeah, one. Yeah, no. number one would just would make me jump a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, you you really feel like you're in there, man, because it's like full interactive activi- activity, activity, yeah. whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple, uh, anyways. But yeah, no, I recommend it if you have it, if you can buy it, do it. Because uh, yeah, I was really impressed by it, yeah. and I think it's there in that game of the year conversation uh, for in uh, in uh, for all video games, no doubt. Yeah. Um, now we get into April. And we start getting into the remakes, right? Remakes of the year. Now, I know Jerks hates it, all the remakes being made. But, <laughs> you know, uh, some have a case for being out there, some don't. So, yeah. first remake we get for April is Resident Evil 3. Yeah. Uh, we get RE3, whole new engine, looks completely new. My beef with RE3 is that it just doesn't live up to what RE2 did. Now, RE2 kept the base of the game and built on it, right? Aesthetically, gameplay-wise, uh, even story-wise. It just kind of added to that uh, original RE2. RE3, it just, in my opinion, left out a lot of big story parts out of the, the original game and didn't really add any anything else that RE2 did. And so that's my beef with the game. I think it's a good game. Is it a sixty dollar game? Uh, I don't really think so. I think forty dollars would be more fair for what that game provided. And 
it didn't really add anything that RE2 did to that remake. It, it, it's the same kind of gameplay. I mean, aesthetically, yes, it looks obviously way better than the original RE3, but then it takes out huge story parts out of it. And, and that's where I feel like, uh, I wish, I wish it would have been more. And that's where I feel that it just doesn't contend when it comes to game of the year. It's a good game, but it's just not game of the year. And that's the thing with number three. A lot of people didn't like the original game to begin with. They didn't like the storyline. They thought it was just kind of didn't didn't quite fit in the world. So I think this uh, redoing oh. of, of number three with this part, as far as the storyline, everything goes, made a little more sense. But again, I haven't played it yet, so I can't really know for certain what it what its difference. I, I didn't play the original. I haven't played this one, so I don't know how you know what the difference no, between the two. No, and and that's the thing. Yes, RE three original was rushed, right? It wasn't really the game it should have been because it was rushed out to the PlayStation. Uh, originally that game had a whole other trajectory and that's fine. And it was real, it was good on the PlayStation, but then take advantage of that. Like if it was rushed, uh, initially, like, Hey, maybe we should really build on it more, make it really fleshed out for this remake that we have. And it just kind of seemed like they kind of half-assed it. It wasn't really, it, it wasn't really a Capcom uh, team that did it. It was a whole other team. Um, and that's where I feel like, man, they, they kind of missed out. Like, it's a good game. I enjoyed it. Um, but I just feel like, yeah, they could have taken a lot more advantage and really gone all in like they did with RE2. But, you know, that's so whatever. Could have been that could purpose, too, because, you know, we got Resident Evil 8 coming here within the next year or so. And that might have been, you know, and, it might have been building on that storyline rather than. You know, the number yeah, two, and that's you know. another thing. Like, I feel like they're trying to do a yearly Re Resident Evil release yeah. schedule. Remake, new game, remake, new game. But this is one of those situations where, man, you could have just delayed it. And, you know, that would have been fine. It would have came out this year. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe later this year. And it was, still would have been fine. But they, yeah. they had to keep the schedule. And that, it seems like yeah. they had to make a lot of cuts. And unfortunately, it's a good game, but it's just not, you know, game game of the year worthy. Gotcha. Um, the next remake comes out in April, and uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. Now, this isn't a game that I have played. I've heard a lot of good about it, and I hear a lot of people have it as their game of the year so far. Um. I, I kind of didn't want to touch it until finishing the original seven, uh, which I'm in the process of. But basically, people are telling me this is like three hours of, of the original expanded to like 15, 20 hours. Yeah. Uh, so it's a lot of filler in there is what I'm hearing. But people really love it because obviously, aesthetic, aesthetically, it's a huge upgrade. Uh, and... Uh, but the, and the gameplay is really good. It's kind of gone into like of a, of a action RPG uh, kind of uh, gameplay. But what do you what do you think about this? Game? Uh, again, I haven't played the new. I haven't played the remake, so I don't know much about. It. I've seen people play it. I think I saw Jerks playing it a little bit. Um, and again, I, I love the new combat style because that was the thing I always hated. I always hated going through. You're walking along and boom, you get hit with something. It's like son of a. I didn't want to play that. Um, you know, so I loved it. I love that part of it. I love. Like I said I played the original again. You know, for those of you who have not seen the original, this thing literally came on four separate discs. You know, and it, it, it took you a long time to get through all those. So, okay. And you know, and you had to really work up to get this. Some of those, some of those bad bosses, you had to really work up to get to them to be able to take them down. Because even with your, Damn, your strongest, okay. your strongest uh, guys, you know, your strongest, you know, summonings still wouldn't wouldn't hit the, sometimes wouldn't even do a dent in these guys until you got strong enough so it was and even when you even like you said all oh, you guys were as, as max levels you still couldn't take down some of these bad of these bosses Damn. yeah this thing was i mean this was a tough no, game I'm... and it took a lot of, people took a lot of time to beat it so i mean it's i'm and i understand that they're breaking this up into three or four different parts because that makes sense yeah this, this thing was it's huge you know so expanding even even on the first part of it to make it even longer that's yeah. really gonna that's really gonna help them out in the long run yeah, and that's, I've heard both sides. I've heard some people complain about that, that they wish it was just the whole game or instead of breaking it up into parts, how much longer till the second part? I mean, yeah. this first part took years. Uh, it was announced, I think, at the beginning of the PS4 cycle, which was 
like seven years ago. So how long before we see the second part? Um, and then I see the other side of people saying like they really loved it. They really loved how it focused, it honed in on that beginning part of the game. Uh, it added on to it is what I'm hearing. I, I, I don't, I haven't heard yeah. any spoilers, but for what I'm hearing from that side is that they added to the story. So it kind of delves deeper into that part of it. And pe- a lot of people like that. So I- I'm still in the midst of going through the uh, original. I'm still in the uh, original city. So yeah. I'm not, I know. Huh? I said, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to take a while to get out of there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I know that it takes, yeah, it takes a while for me to get out of that original city. And that's where a uh, remake ends. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of just kind of diving through that first before I jump into the remake. But I hear a lot of good things. I hear it is a game of the year contender, so we'll see. We'll see at the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, another game that came out in April, Predator Hunting Grounds. Yeah. Another of those online 3v1 games. What do you? What, have you yeah. heard anything about this? That I think would be interesting to play. I haven't. I hate, I really didn't hear much about it. I haven't seen much, too much about it yet. But I mean, again, I'm a fan of the. Pre- I mean, I have every single one of the Predator movies. So, and I'm talking like everything up until till recent. So, yeah. I'm, I'm so, Predator, if that's so. the case, I think you would really love this game. Yeah. Uh, uh, some DLC just updated uh, on that where they added, finally added Arnold Schwarzenegger in the game, his nice. character. Uh, which I guess he wasn't in there to begin with, but now he's in the game. Uh, so uh, it seems that they have updated the game. They're keeping up with it. Uh, hopefully the community is there. Uh, game of the year contender, probably not, probably not. But fun game for fans. I think that, uh, yeah, I think it's there. Especially right now, it's a good it's a good way to get some friends together and play an online game, you know, because you can get them all together and, and just play against each other and you just have fun. You know, and like I said, I'm a fan of being a fan of Predator. I remember one of the Call of Duties where you could summon the Predator as, as the uh, map big thing, you know. Once you had enough points, you could summon and become the Predator and just start wasting people that way. Yeah. So I think it's okay. I yeah. Like I mean, that. come on. Kind of cool. Any you know? game where you could be the Predator yeah. sounds pretty badass. Um, now we get into May. Now we're, we're, we're right in the thick of things. Uh, Things are kind of going back to normal a little bit, but, you know. Uh. Anyways, uh, this is a DLC, uh, Mortal Kombat Aftermath. Yeah. Now, the reason I bring it up, I did play this. You know, I did I did get the DLC. And I got to say, man, it's a really good DLC. Like, NetherRealm, the developer behind uh, Mortal Kombat, man, they really... They really care about the fans, man. And that's what I get from this DLC is like they care. They care about their game. They care about the, the lore. They care about the fighting. They care about mechanics. Like just everything, man. Uh, they're really like in there with the fans. And that's why I love this game. That's why I love this developer. Uh, because they, they, they listen. They care. You could tell. Uh, and with Aftermath, not only do you get a story, uh, update, a story DLC, which is, like another couple of hours of story, which is cool for those single player people that just want to play a story. Hey, you get that. Uh, then they put in more characters in the game. You get Robocop. Oh, yeah. You get to fight as Robocop. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, you get other, like, Mortal Kombat, uh, you know, lore characters. Uh, but damn, like, just a bulky DLC. You also get the friendship fatalities, which is like, the Get old back, school yeah. fatalities that uh, where you you fucking you can, you beat them at the end and then you do like a friendship finisher, right. which is like <laughs> free. Even if you didn't get the DLC, it just came with the update. So I wanted to bring this up because I, I thought it was like meaty enough to be included. Yeah, uh, and it's keeping Mortal Kombat in the conversation, and I, I thought it was it was a really good update. Yeah, it's actually it looks a lot of fun. I, I I mean, I always enjoyed watching Mortal Kombat. You know, seeing how everything played out. Yeah. And then, and then but it, the thing about you know what always bugged me is it didn't have a really good storyline. And I think they've really been adding that more into the last few games. And so this one here, you know, adding this yeah. and and giving a chance to kind of they're actually giving it a chance to reboot the entire storyline with with what they're yes, doing. Yes. So that could be interesting. No, to see and I'll be honest, too. like I haven't kept up with the stories from the past ones because, like yeah. you said, it just ha- those haven't caught my attention. The story in this one is is pretty captivating and it kind of catches you up with everything that's happened before um 
So that's why I was like, okay. And then the DLC comes out. The story's good on that as well. It yeah. continues it. And so it's just kind of like a, for me, as far as DLC goes, man, it's a 10 out of 10. And, and that's kind of rare when it comes to DLC. Because, uh, you know, it kind of rarely knocks it out of the park. And I think Aftermath does that for Mortal Kombat. I think what I really want to see, though, is one of the friendship uh, finishers where it's like one of the females kissing the guy says, I love you like a brother. And it just says, friend zone, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, you know, NetherRealm, they go all out, man. They go all out with their fatalities. It's nasty. Oh, their yeah. brutalities are nasty. And then their friendships are really funny. So yeah. it, you get the whole spectrum of it with those games. Um, next release in May, it's a Nintendo Switch release, exclusive Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Now, I, I played this game. Uh, you know, I want it included. We're including other remakes. Do I think it lives up to what those other remakes have done? I mean, we have Final Fantasy VII. We have yeah. Resident Evil Three. No. Uh, it does look better. You know, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles originally released for the Wii. So, obviously, it looks way better. Um, it's a good game. It's a good game, uh, but it, I just don't think the remake does enough to really differentiate it out out of everything else. Uh, it's a, it's a really good game. I mean, if you haven't played it and you have a Switch and you like RPGs, get this game. But I don't think it belongs at that game of the year because it's just kind of like a copy and paste kind of with a couple of things added aesthetically, yeah. uh, quality of life, and then a prologue. But it's not enough to put it in that game of the year strategy, you know? It's a shame because, I mean, if you're going to redo something like that, you really want to make it better than the original and not just kind of a small step up. You want it to be a good step up, so. Yeah, correct, yeah. And it, it just kind of didn't do that. Um, now, we get into June. Now, we're just kind of, we're in July, you know, just got into July. We'll see what happens the rest of the year. Yeah. But now we're into the meat of the year. Uh, and we get a lot of good releases this year. I want to start off with Valerie. Valorant came out to a lot of hype. It was big on streamers, big on Twitch, because you had to, like, watch Twitch to get a code, apparently. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of ca caught a lot of attention. It's like a Overwatch meets, uh, what's that one game? Uh, Smite? No, uh, the the shooter. Halo? Oh, shit. It's, huh? Halo? No, no, no. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> it's like a hero, third person, shootout, 5v5, 4v4, whatever. And it's it's not my type of game. It's not my cup of tea. It's really slow. Um, and that's kind of like what it's going for. Because that's the kind of style of gameplay it's going for. But it's just not what I'm into. What, what do you think? I've heard of it. I have not really seen it played that much. I'm not really into those uh, particular style of games. I'm like, except for Overwatch. I do like to play Overwatch. Um, but like Smite, Valorant, those are the ones. I really haven't gotten into those too much. Um, it just, I don't know. It just really didn't, from the get, from, from just what I had seen originally, didn't really pique my interest that much. And so I really didn't pay too much attention to it. I know uh, Jerk's played it a few times. He always he was always raging against it, but yeah, a uh, Counter Strike. That's what it's it Counter Strike. Overwatch okay. and Counter Strike. So Counter Strike's very like <laughs> yeah, uh, just slow pace. Eight watching your corners. It's just not my my kind of game. Uh, but a lot of people are into it. It's continued to be updated a bunch. It's you know Riot Games made it, so they got a bunch of money. They could go all in. Um, but it's just not my kind of game. Do I think it's game of the year? I don't think so. I don't think with everything that's still slated to be coming out this year, and even with what's come out before it, I mean, you got Final Fantasy, you got Animal Crossing, you got Doom Eternal. I still don't, I don't think it's up at that level. I think it's a good game. People enjoy it. That's fine. Yeah. I don't think it's game of the year. Um, next <laughs> game that comes out, very controversial. The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, we we've done a review on this. Uh, JP and Judge. If you want to watch that, you can watch uh, last week's uh, Hum Day show. Uh, I haven't played the game. 
How, what do you what do you think about this game? I, uh, I watched Jerk streaming it a little bit. Um, honestly, I, I I've seen both good and bad on it. And like I said, I haven't played the very first one, so I don't know the whole lot on this. I don't know the storyline really well, um, and I do want to play it eventually. But I mean, you know, I'm I think from a lot of a lot of what I'm seeing, people are getting upset about is is that when you have to, when you have to kill the dogs. I mean, and I'm like, this is apocalypse. <laughs> what the hell does it matter? You know. My my thing is I'm seeing two sides and there's no middle ground. I'm seeing people that really love it mm -hmm. and think it's game of the year. Yeah. And then I'm seeing people that really hate it and think it's one of the worst games of all time. So I I'm and I, too, yeah. I, 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 I think I've seen very minimal middle ground where people are like, Yeah, I love it, but then I don't and, and yeah, but for the most part I'm seeing very two sides of it, very two spectrums. So it's very hard to tell whether, you know, I'm, I'm going to get to it. I'm going through the first one. Uh, I want to get to the second one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know uh, how will I feel about it. I don't know yeah. at the end of the year how will people feel about it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but, yeah, very polarizing game uh, to say to say that, yeah, uh, you know. It's definitely less, a yeah. more stealth-oriented game. Like, you need to be careful and be quiet where you're going, which makes sense. You know, you're dealing with zombies who are attracted to sound so you want to be as quiet as you possibly can and you know, just that i don't think a lot of people want to play that title of game i think a lot of them are just wanting to get, get in there and get yeah. some action you know rather than yeah so yeah it's, it's gonna uh, so, well there's uncharted is you know yeah. if you want to yeah, so. <laughs> uh, made by naughty dog as well yeah. anyways a couple of last games that i want to mention that came out uh recently in june uh one we got pokemon sword and shield the dlc isle of armor now uh, I'm bringing up DLCs in this list. This is one of the DLCs that I think fell. Uh, it just doesn't do enough. Um, it's part one of a two part DLC. The second part coming out later in this year. I just doesn't think, I, I don't think it do, does enough. It, 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 story, I think you could get through in like two hours at most. Yeah. Um, and it does add a, a new area and a lot of Pokemon, but, uh, I just don't think it does enough, and that's where I, I mean, yeah, it's a great game overall, but uh, the DLC, uh, unfortunately, leaves a lot uh, to want, you know, so. I think the fan base is what's probably going to kick that one into gear, really keep that one in gear, but I don't think it's going to keep it, just because, like you said, you can only, you can, I mean, to be honest, this is Pokemon, how many more different Pokemon can they really create? I mean, you've got so many different things <laughs> now. I mean, I mean, there's like, what, almost over 1,500 at least? Well, the thing is that they added Pokemon that weren't included with the original game that were already part of the, the right. lore. Uh, so they, they didn't include all the Pokemon in the original game. So what they did is they added some very new ones, minimal, and then they added a bunch of, like, old ones that weren't in the original game. So, you know, it's... Yeah, I mean, it leaves a lot wanting, but I think it's good. It's good. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it gives you a lot more to do, especially if you've done everything originally. But uh, compared to other DLCs on this list, you know, we have uh, Mortal Kombat. Uh, you have Call of Duty. It, it just doesn't match up to those. Right, yeah. And last thing, uh, I know... Uh, Ninjala came out a couple of maybe a week ago. It's a kind of like free to play game on the Switch. Mm. Um, kind of. I, have you ever heard of Pl Platoon and and those kind of games? I've heard of the movie. I haven't heard of any of the games though. Okay, so Ninjala is kind of like a free to play, jump online, multiplayer battle battle kind of game. Oh, Splatoon. Um, hmm? Splatoon or Platoon. Uh, Splatoon is oh. another game. Okay, I'll say, yeah, I've heard of I Splatoon. I kind of compared to this Platoon, new game yeah. called Ninjala. Yeah. And it kind of, it's kind of similar, but not really. But um, it's another game that I think could catch fire uh, because they're going to keep updating it. It has a battle pass, so it could kind of catch on. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, not very uh, game of the year contender at the moment. But yeah. uh so far, from what we've talked about, JD, and what we've listed out there, so far, what would you say is game of the year as of right now? Um, 
I'm going to say Last of the List 2 is probably going to be the highest contender at this point just because uh, out of the actual uh, independent you know, IP games, that one's actually going to be the best one um, just because it's got a good okay. storyline, it's got good graphics, it's got good playability, and it's, mm. you know, when you're working with other people. Um, as far as the remakes go, you know, I know, I know you're you're on. You know, as far as the uh, as far as remakes, yeah, I think uh, Final Fantasy VII's got a good contention as well, just because yeah, it has a I big agree. fan base and it has remastered everything as far as the game goes. You know, damn it, just, it, those are two games I haven't played. Yeah, those, I don't me either. Your two you know? game of the year contenders are games that I haven't me played. Me either. So I've got to say something so, about uh, it. Right? I need to like get on that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's I just they, they both have really good graphics, they both have good gameplay, and I think they're both going to be really high up there as far as uh, people want to, want to see them as, as Yeah, no out. doubt. So. Um, I want to point out uh, Animal Crossing, obviously. I've been talking <laughs> about it this whole year. I think that's going to be Game of the Year contenders, no doubt. Uh, the fact that they're going to keep updating and updating, people are going to keep playing and playing. It's going to be up there at the end of the year regardless. I mean, we still have Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, we still got Cyberpunk. Yeah. So we still got a bunch of games that still haven't came out that uh, too. Ob- obviously are going to be on the list. But I think Animal Crossing is going to stay, stay there and uh, be in the conversation at least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, tell us what you guys think. Tell us what you guys are uh, think it's going to be the game of the year. Is it one of the games that's out now? Is it one of the games that will be coming out? Is that what you think? Comment below. Let us know. Please like, share, subscribe. Let all your friends know. Uh, tell us what you liked about this show, what you didn't, what your opinions are. We love to hear from you. We'll respond. But thank you guys for watching the Hub Day show. We're here every Wednesday. We're a little late this week, but, yeah. you know, things happen. Uh, but thank you, guys. Uh, JD, anything you want to say? Well, I got one honorable mention. This probably won't be a Game of the Year contention, but it's actually from my, from my childhood. Well, not childhood, but from my, uh, you know, younger years. Uh, and, and then this is one we talked about on one of the other shows. Command and Conquer Remastered. Another remake. Yes, it contains, I did leave contains, that one out. You're right. Command and Conquer, but that and one, Red Alert. So, Command and Conquer, not, visual upgrade, big time. Yeah, looks way better. Uh, they kind of stuck with the core gameplay, but that's what the fans want. Exactly. Uh, but I have a lot of friends that have jumped back on that. Uh, and you're right. I mean, if the fan base stays around, I wouldn't be surprised if, if that. In the conversation somewhere there, no at doubt. A, at a twenty dollars price point, I mean that's that's great right there. You know, I mean just get because all these remastered games are trying to charge forty five, sixty bucks, and yep, twenty bucks to get two games, so at least seven hours of gameplay plus multiplayer online stuff. I mean, yeah, which is endless. Yeah, so no it, doubt. It, it should be, no, 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 no doubt. Pretty good. Yeah, so. good call out, good call out. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for all the support. We'll be here back next week. Monday and Wednesday with new episodes. Uh, And y'all have a great day. Peace. Peace.